and welcome to the Inferno. I'm your host, Taya Vitek, and here with me today is our panel featuring Johnny Soto. Sup. Trevor Miglarino. Heyo. And Joey Hardy. Howdy, howdy. On Halloween, the Devils destroyed the Washington State Cougars, earning a 55-21 victory. Pretty similar to the final score of the Washington game ASU played just a week, few weeks before. ASU is now ranked 23. Johnny, how did ASU pull this off? Well, Taya, the Cougars defense had no answer for stopping the Sun Devils' pass and run game on Halloween. In particular, Taylor Kelly, who simply put on a clinic against Washington State by putting up 275 yards. He threw for five touchdown passes, and not to mention having a pair of rushing TDs. Marion Grice had a stellar game for rushing over 94 yards on 18 carries. Sophomore Richard Smith led the uh, Sun Devils with three receptions for 79 yards and one touchdown. Trevor, how did ASU contain Washington State? Well, Johnny, even though this game took place on Halloween, the Sun Devils were not scared of the Cougars. As you can see, last week against Washington State, ASU continued its dominance on defense and forced nine three and outs, including four straight to start the game. The Sun Devils also wreaked havoc in the backfield, totaling three sacks from Marcus Hardison, Devon Coleman, and pass rush expert Carl Bradford. Bradford finished the night with one sack, one tackle for a loss, two forced fumbles. This was a superb defensive effort by the Sun Devils that allowed them to walk away from Pullman with a blowout win of the tune 55-21. Joey, what's the scoop on next week's game? Well, Trevor, it's going to be another big week for ASU mm -hmm. as they head out to Utah to take on the Utes. Now, ASU comes to this game boasting a 4-1 conference record, while Utah has only found one win in the conference thus far. Uh, it was against a Stanford team that just took down the number 3 Oregon squad last night, and what we know from this is Utah could be a tough competitor at their own place. However, ASU is coming off a big first victory on the road, and they'll look to continue a three-game win streak in Salt Lake. Taya? All right, thanks guys. There were some other great games this past week. We'll start with Trevor and the upset game of the week where Stanford faced Oregon. Trevor, how did Stanford manage to take this game? Oh, what a game, what a game, Taya. The Stanford Cardinal took a big step towards their national championship hopes yesterday as they handed the high-octane Oregon Ducks their first loss of the season. The Cardinal held the ball for 43 minutes, opposed to 17 minutes for Oregon. Stanford controlled the tempo for the entire game and had a solid defensive outing, holding arguably the best defense offense in the nation to 312 total yards. Coming into the game, Oregon was ranked number three in the nation and averaged 332 yards per carry. Stanford held the Oregon to wait for it, 62 rushing yards. Despite a last-second rush push by the Ducks, Stanford pulled away 26-20 after shutting out the Ducks for the first three quarters. Johnny, how did the USC-Oregon State game go? Well, USC actually came to play and pulled a bit of an upset in Corvallis against the Beavers. It was a close one in the first half, but then USC came out of nowhere and didn't allow Oregon State to score in the second half. Quarterback Cody Kessler threw for 247 yards with one touchdown and an interception. Uh, Beavers quarterback Sean Manning threw for 277 yards for one touchdown and an interception. The wide receivers, uh, Marquis Lee for USC, had five receptions for 105 yards and one touchdown. Brandon Cooks for the Beavers had six receptions for 88 yards and one touchdown. Joey, how would the UCLA game turn out? Well, it was a great game for uh, UCLA, not so much for the Colorado Buffs who paid a visit to Pasadena last Saturday, and it wouldn't be quite the trip Colorado hoped for. Now Hunley's out here on the field. He's looking to keep this UCLA squad undefeated at home, and early in the game he would. Dropping back, almost taken down by Colorado, but he wouldn't. He throws the long ball. He'll connect with Devin Fuller for 76 yards to put UCLA on the board and in the lead. Colorado quarterback Paul Richardson says, you know what, I can do it too. He punches a nice one into the end zone to regain the lead, but Brent Hunley, he's going to have none of it. Even with his receivers tightly guarded, he'll do it himself on the ground for his first of two rushing touchdowns on the day. They'll score again in the second quarter and the second half is going to be all UCLA as they go on to win this one 45-23. Sounds like the rest of the Pac-12 had an interesting week as well. We have Patrick Spears with how these games affected the standings. Patrick? Thanks Taya. Things get really interesting in the north. After last night's win, Stanford takes control of the division and they now own the tiebreaker against Oregon, meaning they control their own destiny in the conference and it looks likely that they'll get back to the conference title game. Meanwhile, Oregon in second, followed by the Beavers and Corvallis. The state of Washington occupies the fourth and fifth slots. And at the bottom, bottom sit the Cal Golden Bears, who are still looking for their first conference win in the uh, Sunny Dykes era. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the South. And ASU is leading a four-team race with a 4-1 four record uh, in the conference. Meanwhile, they're followed by Arizona and UCLA, both of whom they end the season with. And USC, who ASU has the tiebreaker against, if it comes to that. That trio is all 3-2 and two in the conference, and in the basement sit the Utes and Colorado in the respective fifth and sixth slots. Taya? I heard this was a crazy week, not only for the Pac-12, but nationwide for ranked teams as well. Let's go back to Patrick with the national scoreboard to see how they fared. 
Yeah, last night the other big game in the nation was the Big 12 with uh, Oklahoma taking on Baylor and the Bears' biggest test of the season and likely in school history. Bears run away to a 41-12 victory, causing Waco residents to crack open the Dr. Pepper. And it was their second win ever against the Sooners. Some notable games last week and around the country. One that had the biggest impact on the BCS was the hyped ACC matchup of two undefeated teams, Miami and Florida State. Seminole shut out the U in the second half en route to a 41-14 FSU win that helped the Knolls slide to the two spot in the BCS. Meanwhile, in another battle of top 20s, Oklahoma State visited Texas Tech. Things weren't necessarily weird in Lubbock, just uncomfortable for the Red Raiders as they lost to the Cowboys 52-34, uh, dropping their third straight after starting undefeated. Taya? Thanks, Patrick. All right, looks like we have some more good matchups lined up for this week. We're going to start with the USC versus Cal game. Neither team is currently ranked, but USC is doing pretty well compared to Cal so far this season, to say the very least. Panel, I think it's safe to say that USC is going to dominate this game. Do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, Tay, I'm agree with you. I think USC is going to win this game because six and three on the year, mm -hmm. Cal's one and eight on the year. USC's got their swagger back ever ever since the Lane Kiffin firing, and just Cal doesn't look that good this year. Yeah, hey, you took the words right out of my mouth there, Johnny. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, after the firing of Lane Giffen, they've gotten their game back. They've yeah. become a new team almost, and, I mean, look at their record. I mean, they're going to do well against this Cal team. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys said it. Cal's 1-8. and eight. You guys know who their one win mm -hmm. came against? Who? Portland State. Who? Exactly. Didn't know. even know they were school. Probably couldn't even name their mascot. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we're going to have to pick USC yeah. in this one. There's, there's no question. The Golden Bears are going down. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree. Thanks, guys. Next, we have Colorado taking on Washington at Husky Stadium in Seattle. The teams have mirror image records, Colorado with a 3-5 and five record and Washington with a 5-3 and three record. Neither team is ranked, but I'm thinking that Washington will probably come out with the win. Panel, what do you think? Once again, Tay, I'm going with you. I'm taking the Huskies because they have Keith Price and Bishop Sankey, and that Colorado defense has allowed seven opponents this year to score over 40 points. Also, don't forget that the Huskies were ranked during the first half of the season. Trevor, what do you think? Well, I'll just finish up my drawing, Johnny, but is, I'm going to take Washington as well. Uh, is that a Husky? That's a Husky. Okay. It's right. close to a Husky. It's as close as we're going to get. Right. But, I mean, you got to look at it this way. The rushing game for, Washington, or for the Huskies is way too yeah. good. Way too good. And if you put it nicely, Colorado's defense is a barn door that's wide open, yeah. and they're going to run right through it. Yeah, guys, it's going to be all UW in this Definitely. game. I mean, mm -hmm. UW's got Bishop Sankey, the leading rusher in the Pac-12. Nice. True. Colorado has the worst <laughs> rush defense in gonna the Pac-12. Going to run all over them. Put it together. What do you have? A UW victory. Yeah. There we go. All right, panel. Now, what about UCLA versus U of A? They have the same record of 6-2, and two, but UCLA is still ranked at number 19. Arizona isn't ranked, but they've been doing really well recently, so it seems pretty up in the air at this point. Guys, what are your predictions for this matchup? Well, this is going to be a good game and a close one. However, I believe that UCLA will come out on top because they have a, this guy named by the name Brett Hundley. And for what I've seen, the man can run and throw the football pretty well. Trevor, what does the fro have to say? Well, the fro is going to go with the Bruins. Good. UCLA versus Arizona will be a close game. If you look at statistically, they're evenly matched. Yeah. But I believe that, like you said, with Brett Hundley, as long as he can control the tempo as well as the offense, yeah. that he's going to be able to pull off the victory. See, guys, you may agree, but I'm going to have to seize the upset and go with the bold oh, prediction on. of U of A. Mm, U of A is nah, taking yeah. this one. UCLA hasn't won in Tucson since 2003. Hundley's going to pass, but the Cats have a great run game against this eighth-ranked Pac-12 defense. Mm. I think that UCLA is going to need to bear down this yeah. way. Isn't oh, the yeah. point spread like one point for Arizona, though? In the point, yeah. That's Arizona favorite by a one game. and a half. It's going to be a good game. Yeah. I, I don't think it, it's going to be decided in four quarters. Yeah, no, it's then definitely some not. overtime in there. Oh, yeah. I agree. So ASU faces the Utah Utes this weekend in Salt Lake City. This Utah team may not seem like it will pose much of a threat, but they are dangerous at home, which is where they took down Stanford just a few weeks ago. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, you said it to you, that uh, environment is really tough to play in. However, I believe ASU will come out on top because their last three games, they put uh, at least 50 points on the scoreboard, and the Sun Devils defense has also stepped up big time. Trevor, who are you taking in this game? Well, I'm going to pick ASU, but Johnny, you can't think of Utah and not think of their when they beat Stanford. Yeah. That comes to that mind every really time. Big and you got to think ASU is going to be playing at the Utes. So that's a big, big, you know, Tough environment. Yeah, yeah, tough environment, exactly. Just like we've all been yeah. saying, like yeah. Tay said, like you said. So I'm going to choose ASU, though, because they're more balanced on offense as well as defense. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to take ASU. Yeah, I mean, Utah's got a great atmosphere in there, but honestly, ASU, they're coming off a big road victory from last week. Mm -hmm. um, Utah, they haven't played in two weeks. They just had a, they're coming off a bye week. Yeah. And, I mean, ASU... They're still def they're they're still yeah. looking for they're that Pac-12 yeah. South. They're, they're on, on fire. fire. They want it. So I don't think they're going to drop this one. So I think we can all agree when we say we're going to take 
A. S. U. Well, that's all the time we have. I'm Taya Vitek, and thanks for watching The Inferno. And as always, go Devils.